good Sunday morning to you. Let's talk golf here on this beautiful Sunday morning. We are at the DFW Golf Show at the Irving Convention Center, brought to you by Amstel x Light. Doors will open here at 10 a.m., but Joel Edwards, 16-year PGA Tour veteran, and myself, Brady Tinker, are here with you. Good morning, buddy. Good morning, man. How are you? I'm good. Look like you're pretty chipper. You're in pretty good mood this morning. You got your coffee, no Dr. Pepper. Sorry about that. I don't know. I got to talk to somebody. I'm sure there's Dr. Pepper in the building. Things just aren't open yet. You're listening to the Hazel Rocket here on ESPN Radio, 103.3 on your FM dial. All kinds of stuff for you today. The Arnold Palmer Invitational in full swing. Golf course showing its teeth a little bit. Uh, Emilio Grillo yesterday, a uh, couple of clubs in the lake and a 78. Um, but the Arnold Palmer Tournament is in full swing. Some pretty good players on the leaderboard. Jason Day, the defending champion. Uh, we have a little story about him having a drink with Arnie last year uh, after he won. Joel has plenty of stories for you today about Bay Hill uh, and about Mr. Palmer as well. Uh, that will take us to the 20-minute hour. And then at 27, when we come back, 827, story time with Joel Edwards. A really good story about Joel and Jack Nicklaus. Uh, as you can imagine, Jack can keep uh, players on edge a little bit. And for two days, Jack wanted to talk to Joel. So this is an interesting story, a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, a story about a lady who chose not to have a caddy on the European uh, women's tour. Thursday and Friday fires 67-69, going good, headed into the weekend. Then we'll tell you what happened when they force her to take a caddy on the weekends. Yeah. And our final segment from uh, 8.43 to uh, 8.59, right to the top of the hour, from crappy to happy, uh, making you the average to bad golfer better, making golf more fun for you. Joel will take away your embarrassing shots, give you some driving range rules. If you're I'll give late, you some new ones. I'll if give you're some late, new uh, and on your way to the golf course, as so many of us are, and you get there and you got three minutes to warm up, what do you do and what do you not do? We yes. will talk about all of those things during the Hazel Rocket right here on ESPN Radio 103.3 on your FM dial. Joel Edwards with me. I'm Brady Tinker. All right, so Bay Hill. As we sit here, uh, looks like this. Kevin Kistner and Charlie Hoffman uh, will tee off this afternoon, uh, tied for the lead. Nice comeback by Charlie Hoffman yesterday, finishing birdie, birdie, birdie after a, a tough start to his day. Um, Leishman, Fitzpatrick, Hadwin, uh, Adam Hadwin, who won last week, uh, fires a nice little 68 to get in the mix. He is four back this morning. Lucas Glover, Rory McIlroy should fire 65, uh, as does Ricky Fowler yesterday. Both of them, I think one of them six back and one of them seven back. Uh, but if they got 65 in them on Sunday, 65 on Sunday at Bay Hill would be pretty sight and saucy, wouldn't it? That would do it. Yeah. That uh, would do I, it. I would think so, too. Uh, Bay Hill stories. How hard is this golf course? I played it once. Yeah. Uh, the wind blew. I tried to play it all the way back because I wanted to be man-sized and see what it felt like, and it was yeah. way too much for me. It felt like it was 8,000 yards long. It is. Uh, yeah. Tell me about Bay Hill. Bay Hill is extremely When you get on a golf course, it kind of just lays out there in front of you. There's really no hidden anything. But you get, you hit it down the fairway, and you get just these little slight little slopes. And that's been, uh, like when you see on 11 and stuff like that, and people hit it in the water on their second shot, that's, it's, you're either on the green or you're in the water. It's pretty scary. So there's about five greens like that on the golf course. It's like that. And I can't think of the others, but I know there's a bunch of 14, 13 like that. And when you get around the golf course, it's, you got, Arnie built this golf course, but it kind of looks a little bit like Scotland, really. Mm -hmm. And it's, except it's in Florida. And it's got these rolling little hills around the greens and stuff like that. And that's what makes it really hard, and people don't realize that. But the golf course has got these angles into these pins that make it really hard to get it close. And as you're seeing on the golf course, they're either really close or they're just horrible. And that's because of the runoffs and uh, just the different areas of the greens that uh, Arnie has set up. And when you talk to me about hard golf is, golf courses on the PGA Tour, you most often tell me that there are weird sight lines or weird so angles and stuff like that. It's not distance. It's no. not. It's just that some some things are set up, and and we all know this. No matter how good or bad a golfer you are, some some holes look really good to your eye. You get there and you're like, oh yeah, you know, I just throw my little baby hook out there, and then I. It might be a driver at three iron to you, and it might be a driver sandwich for somebody else. Yeah. To your eye, it just sets up really good for you, and you might play the play of the week uh, three under. Uh, it just depends. On some holes that are literally driver wedge, you have a trouble with because of the angle, or you just, your eyes don't match it. I, I 
I've done it a million times. All right, so early tip. When I'm when I'm standing on, on any hole with a medium to long iron in my hand and it's uncomfortable looking, what? What's the first thing I want to do? To your eye? I'm no. Sure what you, you no, just don't but like the look st of it. strategy wise, what's the first? I, I don't love it. I got well, middle iron, yeah. awkward shot. You know, not, it's not one of those where I, I know everything's just going to fire. So I'm a little tentative. Yeah. More club first for, for no, average to bad would, players? No, absolutely. When you're nervous, I would say swing the club that you need to get there. Because if you're nervous, it's going to be the worst feeling. Okay, okay. So, so lots of clubs. I think so. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you hit the right club or you hit less clubs from harder. It's not so much that. But if you're nervous, you got to swing hard. But I, I would That's a good it. thought, really. Yeah, Say that absolutely. again. If you're nervous, you want to swing hard at it because if you're if you're nervous and you don't have the speed, you won't turn it loose. No, you're going to hit it worse than you ever thought of. And uh, I just think if you're nervous, you got to swing hard. Okay. I, I don't mean like out of your, you know, but I mean you really got to swing it. aggressively. Aggressively. Okay. And, uh, to answer your, I mean I, I got your question. I'm trying to figure a way to answer it. If you're in the middle of air with a middle iron, short iron doesn't matter, and you're not really comfortable with that club. You have to go away from the pin. I'm sorry. You just you have to. If you're not cons if you, the thing is when you got the right club, a tour player's mentality is at the pin, or just they're a part of the green what they're going for. Right. For a slope to play it, however they do. But if they if if they're in between clubs and they go at the pin, they're probably going to hit a bad shot. I'm just. And that's a tour player. Sure. Okay. So if you're if you're in the middle of the fairway with a middle line in your hand, most tour players are probably going pretty close to that pin. Uh, pretty close. Uh, they're, they're thinking of the height they want, basically. Whereas a, a different player, I, I don't like to use the term worst player or not as. I don't. Well I don't have any problem with it. Uh, Crappy saying, players. Yeah. They know who they are. Uh, yeah. So they're going to hit it. They're, they're going to kind of slice it in there, hook in there. Well, so is a tour player, but he's. It's going to be minimal. But they're interested in the height of it. Trust me, they're interested in the height to make it stop. Uh, either stop or roll to that point. That sounds really. Interesting, but that's just the truth. I'm with you. And they're, they're uh, you have to make an aggressive swing. When you, when you don't like, if, if you don't like your lie, that's one thing. But if everything everything's pretty good except you just don't like the club, I would go away from the pin. Or just the look. You know what I mean? I mean, you're oh, you're, yeah. you're uncomfortable at, at well, I've, I've not played this, or I've only played it once or twice. I've never right. hit a good shot here. I'm not quite sure how, what a, how far a good shot carries, exactly. you know, that type of thing. So that not necessarily more club, but an aggressive swing. Absolutely. Okay. It yeah. doesn't mean like you have to swing really, really hard at it. It just means you got to swing it. No, I'm with you. Because, you know, I tend personally to go the other way. Yeah. I tend to take two clubs yeah. too many and swing easier and hope I hit it in the middle of the club and just, yeah. you know, bunt it up there somewhere. But I've never really thought about that. Actually, you stuck me in a, in a good game the other day at Las Colinas, and I did do what you said uh, on, a, on a hole to carry the water. Soccer. These two guys at both, uh, and really good player, not hit very good shots. So it was wide open for me just to get the ball basically over the water and on the green and win the hole. You notice that guy and you and I guy. swung you know, out you know, of my I got shoes. Four guys that you could beat. No, those guys are good. I know, but I, I mean, I wanted to make sure you could probably beat. L don't say that stuff out loud. They're oh, gonna they come. They're, they're gonna they're come not, back. No, they Listen, I didn't. I didn't get to feeling any of those guys were were worried about my game. I'll tell you that. But I, but I did have a good time. Uh, the Arnold Palmer Invitational going on uh, this weekend, Sunday, the, the final round. Kistner and Hoffman will tee off at the lead. How about that finish? Hatton and Leishman and uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick, a good young player at eight under. So those guys are three back. Uh, Adam Hadwin, who won last week at seven under. Lucas Glover, you like Lucas Glover. I do. What, uh, major championship winner. Absolutely. Yeah. Scotty's starting to come back. He's starting to, but I will tell you this, and you haven't asked me this, but I'm going to offer it. Good. If you're five back there, that's nothing on that golf course. Okay, good. That's that is nothing. Six back. I mean, it's nine holes. Well, but it's not But it's not the point of view that everyone thinks, right? Like right. some golf courses, five back is nothing because someone might shoot 62. That's not what you're thinking no, no, here. No. It you're, could be five over. You're saying the, the leaders could shoot 78 like Grio did I'm yesterday. I'm saying yes. the golf course will do that to you. It's uh, That's what I'm saying. You're five or six back on that go. That's nothing. Well, you know, the other thing I noticed, and I can't, I don't remember this, but you can talk about it. A lot of people got up to terrible starts yesterday. I, there were back. a bunch of guys who started bogey, bogey. Well, are one and two, Charlie Hoffman did it. are one and two yeah. really difficult holes? Oh, they're brutal. Yes. Well, two especially is really, really hard. Uh, you know, nowadays, I mean, I'd probably be hitting a three iron in there, maybe a hybrid, four iron, maybe. Really? Yeah, that's a lot for your and second it's swing. it's kind of downhill, and it's right to left green, and there's all kinds of trouble. It's just brutally hard. But one is, you know, it's kind of a dog leg left, and, you know, 
I can hit driver here all day long, but some of these guys, they're hitting three with you. I saw you saw Charlie in the bunker on the right on yeah. one. Well, you know, obviously that's not, I don't know, it's a hard shot anywhere, but if you miss that, if you miss the fairway to the left, I mean, it's an impossible shot. If you miss it to the right, you're in a bunker. If you miss it in the fairway, a Grio hits a six iron in there from, from a three with six iron. Catches the top left and goes back and makes bogey. It's, you don't have to miss it much at Bay Hill to make bogey. Uh, talking about uh, Mr. Palmer's tournament, let's talk a little bit about Mr. Palmer. Give me, give me some good. Uh, he was, he was a stickler for uh, certain etiquettes. Yes. Uh, certainly, he did so much for the game. He really. Would you agree that Mr. Palmer put the Masters on the map, or, or sort of made the Masters this this thing that we all know it is by winning? Right, 58, 60, 62, 64. He wins four Masters in eight years. And all of a sudden, the Masters is a big deal. Is is that accurate? Yeah, it's funny how that all came along. There's no question about it. But I think it was a big deal before because of Bobby Jones. Yes. Nothing was, like was, it turned into after. Uh, you realize that Arnie won 58, 60, 62, and then all of a sudden a guy named Jack Nicklaus, Nicklaus comes is along home. 62. Yep. Arnie's responsible for all of golf, really. Um, what did Bob Hope say? Uh, uh, golf game became popular popular for the masses, and there's two reasons why it did: Arnold Palmer and the Mulligan. <laughs> you know, so the thing is, I wish I said that, but that was Bob Hope, but, and he's right. So Arnie, Arnie was, Arnie was, uh, oh my God, he was incredible. But uh, you're talking about the stuff you do at Bay Hill. No one walks into the clubhouse with their hat on. Nobody. And Arnie I saw a lot Arnie, of I saw I know, a lot of interviews yeah. in the clubhouse yesterday yeah. with their hats yes, on. You I can know. tell I Mr. Can Palmer's tell. not here. That's right. Yeah. You can tell. Uh, but there's I guarantee you there's somebody there telling them that that's not Arnie. Um, Arnie would not put up with that, and he just didn't like it. So I, I can't tell you. I've been in the locker room before and got a stare, and just forgetting that I had my hat on coming in from the golf course. There's a sign on the door when you walk in at the door at Bay Hill. It says. let you know that you're supposed to do that and I have had a stare from the man and I'm sitting there going what did I do oh I got a hat on okay and you take it off and you gladly smile and he kind of looks at you and you know come on over son as far know. as I'm concerned some of the brilliance of the game uh, and, sure and, and I hope I hope that that stuff endures as as Tiger ends up being an ambassador and you know some of these other guys Tiger's running, class, running their own tournaments yeah. and and yeah. I, I hope that that kind of traditional thinking carries on because that's what this game is, right? I oh. mean, the only game where you call penalties against yourself, you know? Yeah, I'd like to see that. Oh, I fouled that guy. I fouled it. I fouled it. Yeah, I held him on that play. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no, not going to happen. This is the Hazel Rocket right here on ESPN Radio, 103.3 on your FM dial. When we come back, uh, story time with Uncle Joel. Joel played golf with Jack Nicklaus plenty of times and some of the greatest players in the world, but uh, there was a two-day span where Joel had to wait to hear what Mr. Nicklaus had to say to him, uh, and it puckered him up a little bit, needless to say. Story time with Uncle Joel on the Hals of Rock, and we return from the DFW Golf Show at Irving Convention Center, brought to you by Amstel x Light. Doors open at 10 a.m. Come on out and see us. The Hazel Rocket right here on ESPN Radio 103.3 on your FM dial. 